let's pretend this is an American wind sensor and this is a European wind sensor and I want to find out what the maximum sustained wind was for the past hour. The American one tells me 15 knots and the European one tells me 13.2 knots. That's quite a bit of difference considering these wind sensors were in the same place measuring the same wind. Why is that? And why should you care? The root of the issue lies in what this number, the wind speed measurement, means. In this video, you will discover the truth about wind readings as well as find out what the forecast numbers really tell you that will change the way you look at them forever. Wind speed measurement is standardized by the World Meteorological Organization, the WMO, which specifies measuring winds at a height of 10 meters, or 33 feet, with a 10 minute average time. The problem is that not all countries follow the WMO and the averaging intervals vary from country to country. For example, most European countries, including the Netherlands and the United Kingdom, use a 10 minute average. The same goes for Australia. India uses a 3 minute average, Canada uses a 2 minute average, and as for the United States, well, it's complicated. The National Hurricane Center uses a 1 minute average for the maximum sustained wind speeds, but the National Weather Services uses a 2 minute average. The National Data Boy Center uses an 8 minute average. If you look at the private sector, sister brands Sailflow, iWindsurf, and iKiteSurf from Weatherflow all use a 5 minute average wind speed on their professional network as well as a 1 minute average for their insurance clients. The smart weather stations like the one that we use uses a 1 minute average. A lot of other private stations use rapid fire when reporting wind speeds, which means they report instantaneous wind speed at that very moment. The point of all of this is to say that when you're looking at a map of real-time stations, a lot of them are using different averaging intervals, so the numbers on the screen are not exactly an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. There are a few exceptions, and one of those is airports. All airports across the globe use a two-minute average wind speed. So if you were to click on an airport sensor, you would know for sure that you're looking at a two minute average, but anything else, well, it can literally be anything. If the wind was steady, let's say 15 knots, then the average time would not matter as all averaging intervals would display the same wind speed. But the reality is that all winds have a degree of turbulence in them, meaning that there are gusts and there are lulls. Think of when you're standing on the beach and asking someone, hey, how's the wind? The answer will depend. Did they say what the wind was when it was lulling, or gusting in, or maybe what they thought was in between? Here's what the WMO had to say. Although any period of time can be chosen for averaging the wind speed, shorter periods of averaging will typically produce more erratic values than a 10 minute average would. For example, 10 one minute averages taken during a 10 minute period will produce values that lie both above and below the 10 minute mean value. Any single one minute random sample is an equally valid or unbiased estimate of the mean wind, but it is likely to be higher or lower than the true mean wind. While one estimate of the mean wind is statistically as good as another, in practice mean winds measured over shorter periods will possess greater variance and will therefore be less reliable. The shorter the averaging time, the more variability is present in the observation. A one minute peak will always be stronger than a two minute peak which in turn would be stronger than a 10 minute peak. So going back to the original question, why does the wind blow 14% stronger in the United States compared to Europe? I'm sure you figured it out by now. It all has to do with the measurement interval. A classic example is hurricanes. Whenever the National Hurricane Center tracks a hurricane, their estimates of maximum sustained wind speed are always about 14% stronger than the rest of the world, as they use a one minute average versus the 10 minute average that most other countries use. This makes things problematic as you can't really compare hurricanes or in fact any wind measurement without accounting for the time average used. In fact, the WMO published a guide on converting between various averaging periods depending on condition. As a rule of thumb, one minute maximum sustained wind speed is about 21% stronger than the 10 minute average wind speed inland, 16% stronger near coast and offshore winds, 11% stronger in onshore conditions, and only 5% stronger 20 kilometers off coast at sea. Now you may think this is all semantics and that such a small difference of 10 to 20% in top wind readings due to averages doesn't matter. But if you combine it with improperly placed sensors, poorly maintained equipment, and infrequent updates, suddenly it just got so much harder to get an accurate read of how windy it actually is. So what's the solution? We suggest to use airport wind sensors, 
own a weather station like we do if it's possible for you, and use private networks like Weatherflow which provide apples to apples comparison. The best possible advice is to use graphs which show the averages, gusts and lulls and are updated frequently. Stay away from graphs which are updated infrequently. Since wind speed measurements depend on time average used, we were curious if different forecast models output wind speeds at different averages as well. At first glance, it would appear as if the forecast wind speed numbers are hourly averages, but we were not too sure, so we emailed wind forecast websites to ask what those numbers mean for a specific wind model. Some of the answers we got said it was a one hour average, wind speed at exact time, 10 minute average, instantaneous, one minute average, five minute average, and some simply said they don't know. Some wind forecast sites found the question so interesting that they asked for us to get back to them once we found out the answer. Unsatisfied with these answers, we went straight to the source and emailed NOAA and ECMWF. The answers we got back surprised us. The wind speed the forecast model outputs is not a time average of any sort. It is an instantaneous value at 10 meters above ground. What this means is that at 10 a.m. exactly, the wind speed is forecasted to be 14 knots, and at 1 p.m. exactly, the wind speed is forecasted to be 12 knots, and so on and so on. This is true for most, if not all, wind forecast models, and this is a big problem in our view. It would be impractical to look at instantaneous wind speed in real life because one moment it can be 15 knots and another moment 25 knots, yet the forecast is instantaneous. This graph shows just that. Instantaneous wind speed is just too erratic, so if the wind forecast for 10 a.m. is outputting an instantaneous value, it can be virtually anywhere along the red line. Essentially, when you're looking at an hourly wind forecast, you get a one second prediction of wind speed for that hour. Well, actually even less than one second, as that's technically an average. To be honest, we were not entirely sure of what to make of all this, as we define wind speed as an average, yet the forecast is an instantaneous number. Well, almost. The wind speed output number is both a spatial average and an instantaneous value in time. In any forecast model, the globe, or specific area, is divided into grids. The smaller the boxes inside the grid, the more accurate the forecast can be. This is also called the resolution of a model. For example, the GFS model has a resolution of 27 kilometers, ECMWF has a resolution of 9 kilometers, and NAM has a resolution of 3 kilometers. Grid point values cannot represent variability on spatial scales smaller than a grid box. As ECMWF put it, the wind speed number you see is essentially some sort of average value over the grid scale. But be aware models don't represent grid boxes very well, so the actual resolution is much lower. Let me give you an example. To calculate surface wind, models like ECMWF calculate winds 40 meters above ground first, and then interpolate those winds to surface winds based on average surface drag. If the land is grassy, there's less drag, so extrapolated surface wind speed would be higher compared to if the area is covered in forest or mountains. The harsh reality is that surface drag for local surfaces can be imprecise as it tends to vary quite a bit. If you look at a grid box which has half land and half water, the model will not be able to differentiate between the two, and instead it would look something like this. For this reason, the 10 meter wind over land or at shore is often rather low compared to surface observations. In the case of a gust value, ECMWF doesn't predict it, but calculates it backwards from other factors such as the surface friction, wind shear, etc. And then the maximum gust is selected from the gusts at each time step during the last three to six hours. Finally, and this is important, just as we talked about comparing sustained winds with different time averages not being exactly apples to apples, be aware of trying to compare instantaneous wind forecasts to the time average wind observations on the ground. As ECMWF scientists put it, care should be taken when comparing model parameters with observations because observations are often local to a particular point in space and time, rather than representing averages over a model grid box and model time step. But hey, let's be real, in reality everyone compares observation to the forecast, but then they scratch their heads why the wind was different than the forecast. So what do you do when checking the wind forecast? We recommend that you don't look at individual spots when checking wind forecasts. Look at the wind map. 
be cautious as a lot of third-party websites average data points between two grid points, but that is just mathematical smoothing, so don't bend your head over it. If you've ever wondered why forecasts and reality don't always match up, I hope this dorky video shines some light onto it. Let us know in the comments below if you like this style of video. We're always looking to make videos that you're interested in watching. Also, if you're interested in a wind sensor like the one we mentioned earlier, check out the link in the description box below to see what we use. All right, that's all we have today. Thank you so much again, and we'll see you next time. Bye.